The human body has 639 muscles divided into skeletal muscle, smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. Probably the most important muscle in the body is the heart that's essential for pumping blood throughout the body. It's made of cardiac muscle. However, did you also know there's a muscle that's called the second heart? The soleus muscles are part of the Achilles tendon in your calf muscles. They start just below the knees and run down to the heels. In this video, I'm going to share with you why the soleus muscle is so important and why it's called the second heart. I'll also give you daily action steps that you can use to train this second heart and improve your health. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. So what is this soleus muscle? The soleus muscle isn't the same as your regular calf muscles, which are at the back of your lower legs. The soleus muscles are underneath the calf muscles. The reason the soleus muscles are called the second heart is because they help to pump the blood back to the heart. Blood flow from the heart happens automatically because the heart is working all the time and gravity is pulling down the blood. However, to get the blood back up again, it needs to fight against gravity, which is why it's much harder to kind of push the blood back up again. This is where the soleus muscles in the calves come into play. Muscle contractions in the soleus open up veins in the legs because of the physical exertion and the blood gets pumped back up again. Once the soleus relaxes, those veins close. I think you can start to see why the soleus muscle is so important, especially if you sit for long periods of time. Not only because of the aspect of being sedentary and gaining weight, but also because of blood pooling up in the legs because it's not getting pumped back up. Chronic vein disease, varicose veins and blood clotting are some of the worst medical conditions caused by this. However, the same problem can occur if you're standing still for long periods of time, such as with a standing work desk. That's why it's important to just move frequently and not stay stagnant, whether that be because of sitting or standing. There's actually very interesting research about the benefits of stimulating these soleus muscles. Mark Hamilton is a PhD from the University of Houston, and he's been researching this for two decades. He's developed what's called the soleus push-up. It's a sitting exercise where you're pushing up your soleus muscles as if you're doing a calf raise. In 2022, Mark and colleagues published an amazing study that showed how doing the soleus push-up while sitting resulted in a 52% lower glucose rise after eating, with a 60% lower insulin response. That's quite amazing. They used regular people who weren't athletes and made them do the soleus push-up while sitting for several hours. Then they gave them an oral glucose tolerance test and measured their glucose response. After doing the soleus push-ups, their glucose levels were 52% lower, and their insulin response was 60% lower. The interesting thing about this was that the participants were able to do the soleus push-ups for many hours without getting tired. The soleus muscles are considered to be infatigable, which means that you should be able to use them for the entire day. According to Mark, there is the correct way of doing it and an incorrect way. First, if you're sitting on a chair, your toes should be parallel to your knees. Try to place your toes on the ground in a way that there's a straight vertical line between your big toe and your knees. Second, picture your ankle joint where your foot meets the ankle pushing forward. Push against the ball of your foot as if you're doing a seated calf raise. This makes your heel rise. The motion should be smooth and dynamic instead of rigid or fast. Mark Hamilton says that the optimal speed of doing the soleus push up is 100 contractions per minute. That's 6,000 contractions per hour, which is a lot. He says you don't want to do the motion too fast because that's too efficient in terms of energy expenditure and you're not engaging the muscles intensely enough. If you're too fast, you're not contracting the soleus muscles enough and it's less effective in terms of glucose and fat metabolism. The perfect speed is about 100 contractions per minute but you should first master the movement with only 60 contractions per minute. So one contraction per second and then gradually increase it to about 100 contractions per minute. Going faster than that makes the movement too energy efficient and you're not actually stimulating the muscles enough. The goal of this exercise isn't to be as fast as possible or to be as energy efficient as possible. The goal is to be just energy inefficient enough to burn the most calories and stimulate glucose metabolism the most. And for that, the optimal speed appears to be 60 to 100 contractions per minute. One mistake Mark points out is just doing an isometric hold of the soleus muscle. You squeeze and lift up your calves and hold it there for minutes. Turns out that the soleus muscle only uses one third of the energy when it's in isometric control contraction compared to when it's shortening contractions. So instead of doing isometric holds or doing super fast contractions like multiple contractions per second, we want to aim for the speed of 60 to 100 contractions per minute. 
Next, let's talk about the duration. How long should you do this? In the 2022 paper by Mark, the participants did the soulless push-ups for 270 minutes per day, which is four and a half hours. That is a very long time indeed, and I don't think that the average person is going to be able to adhere to that unless they are, you know, enrolled in a particular short-term study. But this is what the data shows, and I do think that if you're spending like six to eight hours a day sitting, then trying to do at least half of that with soulless push-ups is going to significantly improve your metabolic health and other health outcomes. So you can think of it, okay, if you sit 10 hours, try to aim for five hours of soulless push-ups, and if you sit only two hours, one hour of soulless push-up appears to be enough in my opinion. But we should still try to not spend that much time sitting because sitting itself is bad for your posture and it can have some other negative effects. The soleus muscle is the most activated muscle during walking and it helps to maintain balance and propel you forward. And walking is obviously one of the best ways to activate the soleus muscle. However, Mark says that the soleus push-up is actually better in terms of burning calories and glucose metabolism than walking because walking is also quite energy efficient where whereas the soleus push-up is somewhat less efficient. So you waste more energy doing that. Regardless, walking is good for other reasons. It's going to be better for your posture and mobility than sitting for sure. So even if you are doing soleus push-ups for a few hours a day, you should still walk. How much should you walk? A recent 2023 meta-analysis of 12 cohorts involving over 111,000 participants saw that walking over 8,700 steps a day compared to taking 2,000 steps a day was seen to be linked to a 60% reduction in risk of all-cause natality, going from 8 to 16,000 provided an additional 5% benefits in risk reduction. So you get the most benefits going from 2,000 to 8,700 steps per day, but if you go up to 16,000 steps, you gain some small additional benefits. In conclusion, the soleus muscle turns out to be quite important. First, it helps to pump blood back up to the heart and prevents it from pulling in the legs, which is why it's called the second heart. And secondly, it's also amazing in improving your blood sugar levels and fat metabolism. I think the soleus push-up is an amazing hack, for lack of a better word, if you are spending a lot of time sitting, whether that be in the office, in the airplane, in the bus, or wherever it is, you can do some of these soleus push-ups and you can counteract some of the negative effects on your metabolism that you get from sitting. The key is just, yeah, finding ways to do it for several hours. If you want to learn more about my evidence-based workout routine then check out this video other than that thanks for watching this video make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered